21 years ago America awoke to the live broadcasting of the horrific attack on New York's twin towers of the World Trade Center. Not only did they collapse, but people were seen falling from windows, preferring to jump than succumb to flames or be crushed by steel and stone. Footage of United Airlines Flight 175 hitting the second tower brought the United States to its knees in shock and disbelief. Hello Brewers! Welcome back to another exciting video. Today we will be looking at 20 mysteries about the event of the 9-11 attack you probably didn't know about, coming right up. There are some however who do not believe the official story of events, shrouding the day in a fog of suspicion and doubt. Whilst some theories push the limits of belief casting blame on shape-shifting aliens or asking us to consider whether the planes were in fact missiles surrounded by holograms made to look like planes, other theories do raise a few eyebrows. Here are 20 mysteries about the event of the 9-11 attack you didn't know about. Number 1. Insider traders knew about attacks before they happened. Right before the September 11th attacks, some fishy business happened within the stock market and insurance firms. An extraordinary amount of put options were placed on United Airlines and American Airlines stocks, the same airlines that were hijacked during the attacks. Many speculate that traders were tipped off about the attacks and profited from the tragedy. The Securities and Exchange Commission launched an insider trading investigation in which Osama bin Laden was a suspect, after receiving information from at least one Wall Street firm. Number 2. Air defense was told to stand down. In the event that an airplane is hijacked, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, is prepared to send out fighter jets, which can debilitate or shoot down the aircraft. On September 11, 01, NORAD generals said they learned of the hijackings in time to scramble fighter jets. Some skeptics believe NORAD commanded defense systems to stand down because of their lack of presence during the attacks. Number 3. Planes didn't make Twin Towers collapse, bombs did. The World Trade Center collapse appeared similar to a controlled demolition. Many speculate that the towers were in fact blown down with explosives placed in selected locations. Some witnesses recounted hearing explosions inside the building as they attempted to escape. Many architects and scientists even maintain that a plane's fuel cannot produce enough heat to melt the steel frames of the two buildings that collapsed. Number 4. The Pentagon attack scientifically doesn't hold up. The Pentagon crash may be the most puzzling event of the day. Theorists maintain that the impact holes in the Pentagon were much smaller than a commercial American Airlines plane. They also question why the plane was not shot down prior to impact, as well as why the plane impacted a section of the Pentagon that was vacant due to renovations. Number 5. Flight 93 was completely staged. The fourth hijacked plane, Flight 93, crashed in Shanksville, Penn. It is believed that the passengers fought back and crashed the plane into a field. Skeptics believe that Flight 93 landed safely, while a substitute plane was shot out of the sky. Other theorists believe that the passengers were murdered or relocated and will never be found. Number 6. Hijackers are alive. How did their passports survive explosion? After the September 11th attacks, the Loose Change documentary stated that all of the hijackers were actually alive in other countries, rather presumptuous since it is possible for two different people to have identical names. But they did raise a good point, how did the passports of the terrorists survive the explosion? In the aftermath of the attacks, passports and identification were found as evidence. Many skeptics question how identification made out of paper survived the same explosion that destroyed buildings. Number 7. Cell phone calls made from plane were faked. In-flight calls were made from cell phones in both hijacked airplanes. Scientists and skeptics maintain that cell phones could not receive reception from the altitude at which planes typically fly. Others questioned a phone call from a son to his mother, in which he referred to himself by his own first and last name. Number 8. Jewish people knew attack was going to happen, took off work on September 11. Theorists noticed that 4,000 Jewish employees took off from work on September 11, 2001. 
Some of the first people to record the attacks on camera were also Jewish. Many became suspicious and put the religious group on the radar as suspects in the wake of the attack. Number 9. One plane's engine survived. According to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, an engine from one of the planes that hit the World Trade Center's Twin Towers somehow managed to survive the plane crash, explosions, and the collapse of the buildings. The engine was discovered a few blocks away from the towers wedged between two builds at 51 Park Place and 50 Murray Street in downtown Manhattan. Number 10. 9-11 was not the first terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. In 1993, the World Trade Center was bombed, killing six and injuring over 1,000 people. CNN reports the explosion created a hole 200 by 100 feet and was several stories deep. The bomb was 1,200 pounds and was in a rider truck parked in the World Trade Center's parking garage, located beneath the building. Six suspects were convicted but the seventh suspect, Abdul Rahman Yasin was never caught and remains at large. Number 11. Mohammed Madar was among the five hijackers of American Airlines Flight 77. The Saudi Arabian hijacker, Khalid Mohammed Abdullah al Madar, was among the five hijackers of American Airlines Flight 77. Around 1999, Mohammed al Madar moved to Afghanistan. As a respected jihadist, Osama bin Laden chose him to engage in the attacks. Moreover, Mohammed Madar first arrived in California in January 2000. During this time, the Central Intelligence Agency or CIA was already suspecting Madar as an al Qaeda member that was involved in a bombing incident. However, the CIA did not notify the FBI because he was not yet on watch lists until August 2001. Number 12. The Bin Laden tapes are fake. Initially, Osama bin Laden denied any involvement with the attacks. Soon afterward, numerous tapes came out claiming he changed his mind and took full responsibility. Many skeptics believe that bin Laden was targeted because of his stake in the stock market, as well as because of former President George W. Bush's personal business ventures in the Middle East. Number 13. Bin Laden chose al Hajmi because of his affiliation with al-Qaeda and his fighting experience. Nawaf al-Hajmi, Muhammad Madar's best friend, left his house in Saudi Arabia around 1995 to fight for Muslims in the Bosnian War. Nawaf al-Hajmi also went to Afghanistan and fought for the Taliban versus the Afghan Northern Alliance. He then returned back to Saudi Arabia in early 1999 and got his U.S. tourist visa in April that same year. Hajmi first came to the United States on January 15, 2000, and stayed in San Diego, at Parkwood Apartments. He later moved to Virginia in April 2001 and joined the rest of the hijackers. Hajmi also regularly met with Mohammed Atta, the squad leader of the attacks, from June until September 2001. Number 14. The American Airlines Flight 11 was a Boeing 767. The American Airlines Flight 11 was a Boeing Boeing 767-223ER. In total, Flight 11 had 11 crew members and 81 passengers on board, and five of them were hijackers. The American Airlines Flight 11 was a domestic passenger flight. Number 15. Marwan al Shahai was the leader of the hijackers in Flight 175. According to the investigations, the hijackers of Flight 175 violently breached the cockpit and gained control over the pilot and its first officer. The leader of the hijacker, Marwan al Shahai, who was a trained pilot, took control of the airplane. In contrast to the first plane, Flight 11, which the transponder, a radio transmitter in the cockpit that works with ground radar, was turned off, this airplane's transponder was visible on New York Center's radar. This allowed the air traffic controllers to have a better record of the flight's movements. Number 16. It is said that Erwan al Shahai was only 23 years old. Born on May 9, 1978, Marwan Youssef Mohammed Rashid al Krab al Shahai was a student from the United Arab Emirates who later lived in Germany around 1996. 
Marwan al Shahai traveled to terrorist training camps in Afghanistan in 1999 and joined Osama bin Laden's plan in attacking the United States. By the year 2000, Marwan al Shahai arrived in the United States and devoted his time and energy to the preparations of the attack. Furthermore, he took surveillance flights and studying the details on how the hijacking could be effective and he assisted the arrival of his fellow hijackers to the suicide mission. Marwan al Shahai was the youngest hijacker pilot to participate in the attacks. Number 17. The United Airlines Flight 93's impact on the crash produced a crater. The United Airlines Flight 93's impact on the crash caused a crater in the field between 8 to 10 feet deep and up to 50 feet wide. There were no survivors. All of the dead bodies were scattered within a radius of 28 hectares. Some of the plane's fragments went as far as 13 kilometers. Number 18. Black boxes found by search crew kept secret. During the weeks following the attack, the plane's black boxes were one of the most important items under investigation. They were the only evidence into what happened inside the cockpits of the plane. Three of four black boxes were found and only one was in good enough condition to hear. The tape was not initially released, but was shared with families of the victims in 2002. So Iptix believed the tapes were not disclosed in order to support a secret scheme. Number 19. Aluminium planes can't penetrate steel structure of World Trade Center. Commercial airplanes' frames are constructed with a very light aluminium material in order to make it easier to fly. Theorists maintain there is no possible way an airplane can do as much damage to the Twin Towers as it did. They believe that missiles or explosives were used to ensure the buildings collapsed. Number 20. The South Tower of the World Trade Center burned for 56 minutes before collapsing. The five hijackers of Flight 175 that crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center were Marwan al Shahai, Fayez Banihamad, and Hamza al Gamdi. After Flight 175 glided nose first through the South Tower, it collapsed at 9:59 a.m. after burning for 56 minutes. This is 21 years after the attack, yet we may never know the entire story, regardless we will always remember the people lost on that tragic day. That's all we have for you brewers. We hope you enjoyed the video. Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Let us know which mystery you think is true. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.